Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, Thursday Black Widow Yoga Metal Class. And if you have not uh, are, or are unsure where the playlist is, uh, we have it on the uh, Facebook, I believe the Instagram as well, and our website, blackwidowyoga.com. Now we're going to get started. We're going to start at the low and soup the Baddha Konasana for bound angle pose. Our feet touching together, soles and feet touching together, maybe hands on the hips, somewhere comfortable. We'll start by finding our breath and settling into the class. Maybe there's some different breathing techniques you want to do. Um, one of my personal favorites, uh, often referred to as rescue breathing, it you know helps with anxiety, especially. It's our exhalations are slower than our inhalations, about a double the pace. So if you want to try this, we'll inhale to uh, your count of four. And exhale to your count of eight. And repeat. And stay there and try to continue to do that. Uh, it's one of my favorite breathing techniques. It also teaches a lot about controlled and conscious breaths that we have to use throughout the practice. Transitioning now, we're going to come into bridge pose. Let's just do an angle from here. And like I say, most of my classes, one of the reasons why I love bridge so much, especially during these, uh, these times, is that uh, we spend a lot of our time now sitting. If you want to start the pose, you're going to interlace the fingers together. Open the chest to the ceiling and drive through the soles of the feet and the hips. I just feel, especially during these times, a lot of us are working from home or, you know, I'm certainly guilty of binge watching Netflix. So it's a great pose, it's really the opposite of a sitting motion. We have our hip extenders kind of engaged, our glutes behind us, you know, creating length in the hip flexors in the front of the body. And just stay here. Slowly lowering to the mat. We're going to come around and we're going to make our way into tabletop. We're going to start warming up the spine and the core with a uh, cat-cow uh, rotation here. Cat-cow flow, if you will. So while we're in tabletop, though, just, you know, keep an eye on your joints and make sure it's stacked, right? Shoulders over wrists, looking behind you, making sure you can't see your two big toes. And as I inhale, I'll let the belly, the belly hang soft. And as I exhale, I want to pull the belly button back to the spine. And getting that Uddiyana Bandha, you know, uh, uh, that Bandha engaged here, and keeping our core nice and tight, rounding the upper back, kind of creating length in our rhomboids, while keeping the core engaged. Inhaling our way back to cow. Exhaling again. Pulling the belly button back to spine as we exhale, rounding the back. Just transition between the two poses. Taking them at your own pace. Maybe a couple more. back into a neutral position. Now transitioning our way into bird dog, I'm going to start by extending the left leg up and extending the right arm out. Now in bird dog, make sure you're, you have your heel nice and level with your hips, not too high, not too low. And turn the inner ankle in so our foot's not out. We want to drive through that heel to keep that leg engaged. 
I'm using our core to keep balance. And as we are creating length behind us, we want to create length in front of us too. So really extending the arm forward, extending the crown of the head to the front of the room, creating a length there. So we're not really looking up, we're looking down into the top of our mat. And shoulders away from ears. Option to stay here, we come to a bit of a crunch flow, bring your elbow to knee and extending, creating what? Elbow to knee, driving the heel, pulling the arm forward. In your own pace, we'll do a few more. Finding stillness, making our way back into the tabletop. Switching to the opposite side now. And driving the right heel back. Bringing the right arm up. And we drive that heel. And making sure the toes aren't out. We're turning the inner ankles in. Creating length behind us. Creating length in front of us. Nice and strong here, rooted through the mat. Core engaged, helping us keep balance. Option to come into the crunch flow. And we're creating one as we open back into bird dog. Slowly coming back through tabletop. Awesome job. Now we're going to come into dolphin pose. I, I really like this pose a lot. And one of the reasons why I like it is uh, it's a great alternative to downward facing dog. Especially if you have any shoulder ailments. But we'll start. Another reason why I like it is I can really kind of call to the core here. Because we don't have our hands on the mats to really push through this downward facing dog, right? So we'll start in a bit of a high plank. And the kind of sensation I want you to feel, not only are we kind of hugging the sides in here, right? But as we're hugging the sides in, and as we're coming into dolphin, I really want to zip through the abdominals and pull up. And yeah, yeah, I want to call to that sensation and come into that high plank. And zip through the abdominals. One more time, lowering into high plank, hugging in the sides, and coming in through dolphin, pulling up through the abdominals. Excellent job. And come back into tabletop and make our way into downward facing dog. And again, remembering that cue, we come into downward facing dog. You know, pulling up, maybe even using Udi on bond if that helps. Really pulling up through downward facing dog, not just pushing away with our hands. That was our first downward facing dog of the practice. Maybe you want to wag your tail a little bit. Maybe you want to pedal out the heels and warming up the hamstrings. And pushing away with the hands. Walking feet to hands. We'll hang in a ragdoll position or another forward fold of your choice. First, the I like ragdoll. It's really important here to let that head hang heavy. All right, take any tension you have on your neck. Maybe you want to go side to side. You say no. Up and down for yes. You circle the neck. Any way for you to create relax, uh, relaxation and really tension in the neck. If your hamstrings feel a little too tight in this pose, just feel free to lower the, the ribs on the uh, quadriceps. And still letting that head hang heavy.
really rooting through the mat. Driving through the feet, inhaling into our extended mountain pose. No getting sight of the camera. Exhaling hands through heart center, forward folding. And again, similar to dolphin, similar to uh, excuse me, similar to dolphin and similar to uh, downward facing dog as we pull up into halfway lift. Get up through the abdominals, right? I would, I would always recommend we got a banda in halfway lift. It's not just a transition, it's a pose. We're pulling the chest through, engaging the rhomboids in our back, squeezing them together. And again, we don't want, and I'll do it from this side too, so we can see this next cue landing right me. We really don't want our ears near our shoulders. We're also creating length in our spine here, right? So zipping up through the abdominals, neutral spine, pulling through the chest, rhomboids engaged behind us, extending the crown of the head to the front of the room, creating length. Exhaling, forward folding. Driving up through, reach and rise. Exhale, and forward fold. Forward fold, a little bit of a half salutation, so we're gonna come through that again. So again, I, I like to cue this a lot, because uh, you know, it, without just doing sit-ups, core is in a lot of movements in yoga. So when we're halfway lift, I'm gonna zip up through the abdomen again. Ooh, maybe using our Uddiyana Banda here, belly button back to spine. Notice how that lands in your body. Squeezing the rhomboids, getting your back, pulling your chest through. Exhale, forward folding. Driving through the heels, inhaling, reaching, and rising. Exhale, forward folding over the mat. Inhale, halfway lifting. Exhale, again, working with our breath, hands to the mat, coming into a high plank. And similar to how we hug the sides in a dolphin pose, kind of come up on your toes, and again, you can do this plank, knees up or down. Come through our chaturanga, hugging the elbows, and feel that same hugging sensation as we did in dolphin. Inhale, back bend, dropping the hips to the front of the room. Exhale, and downward facing dog. Walk your hopping feet to hands. We'll go through that sun salutation A again. Inhaling the halfway lift. Exhaling the forward fold. Driving through the heels, inhaling into extended mountain. Exhaling forward fold. And really working with our breath. Moving up through the abdomen, halfway lift. Hands to the mat. Your chaturanga, high to low. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. So that's sun salutation A. I'm just going to add a couple more poses to that flow now. Uh, walking your hopping feet to hands. Inhaling the halfway lift. Exhaling, we're going to sit back into the chair pose. There's a good strength pose here. And just notice that one reason why I like to do this, uh, this pose at an angle here and kind of use my video as a mirror. I want to try to keep my knees over my ankles as much as I can. If that means coming up out of the chair a little bit. And if you feel like you have any bowing in your lower back, use your Uddiyana Bada. Pull belly button back to spine. Let the natural curvature of your back here. Exhale, forward fold. Drive through the feet, reach and rise. Hinging at the hips, forward folding. Sitting up through the abdominals, halfway lift. Creating length in our spine, extending the crown of the head in front of the room. Hands to the mat, high to low push up. Pulling the hips forward into the back bend, driving through the tops of your feet. If you're choosing to do awkward facing dog, 
Remember, Cobra is always a good substitute for that pose. And coming through to your halfway lift. Reaching the right leg up, driving the heel up to the ceiling. Stepping to the front of the mat, driving through the feet, coming into our Warrior One. Again, remember Warrior One, our hips are square to the front of the room, and our knees should be right above our ankle. And stacking joints there. Let's be here for a couple of breaths, rooted through the mat. We're going to inhale, reach through our fingertips, hands to the mat, and come through our flow and vinyasa to the other side. Driving that left leg to the ceiling, three-legged dog, step into the front of the mat, driving through the feet, squaring the hips. Warrior one. Inhale, reach through the fingertips, hands to the mat. Remembering at any point, you can skip the chaturanga, just meet us in downward facing dog. Or if you need a bit of a rest, child's pose or embryo are great options. And we're going to walk, hop, or float, feet to the mat. Inhale the halfway lift. Forward folding. Driving through the feet, reaching and rising. Exhale, forward folding. Inhale, we back into our chair pose again. And remember the same cues as before. Bring knees over ankles as much as we can. Natural curvature of the spine. The strength pose here, stay with your breath. Maybe find your drishti. Exhale, forward folding over here. Driving through the feet, reaching and rising. Hinging at the hips, forward folding. Pulling up through the abdominals. Pulling our chest through, halfway lift. Hands to the mat, into a high plank, hugging the elbows in through our low plank. Pulling the hips to the front of the room, keeping shoulders away from ears. All right, creating a length there. Pushing away, coming into downward facing dog. Driving the right heel up again, stepping to the front of the mat, coming into warrior one. So here I would like to come into uh, what I call a uh, humble warrior flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inhale, reach through my fingertips. When I do that, I want to keep an eye out as I reach. I don't want to lose integrity in that front leg, right? So I want to keep it over the ankle. Also, I'm going to use my Uniana Banda, pull belly button back to spine. Exhale, I'm going to hinge at the hips, almost like a standing sit-up. Come into Humble Warrior. Inhale, Warrior One. Exhale, Humble Warrior. Just create your own flow here. Maybe you want to do this with your eyes heavy or shut. I've heard this being called a moving meditation before. For those type A's that don't like to sit still, like I hate sitting still. It's a great way to engage meditation, not just seated. Just be with our breath and our motion. Finding stillness back in warrior one. Read through your fingertips, hands to the mat. Vinyasa to the other side. Coming into three-legged dog on the left side. Stepping that left foot to the front of the mat. Squaring our hips to the front of the room. Coming into warrior one. 
Inhaling, reaching through the fingertips. Pulling belly button back the spine. Come into that same flow on this side. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Humble warrior. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, humble warrior. Just create your own flow here. Again, this personal preference, eyes heavy or shut. Some people work with a mantra. Back in warrior one, finish the one you're working on. Reach through your fingertips, hands to the mat. Either come through your vinyasa or meet us in downward facing dog. Very good. We're going to come into uh, the side plank. So I'm going to show it first with the uh, so a little level down. So first I'm gonna uh, bring my leg down, left leg down like a kickstand. I'm gonna center my left hand in the middle of the mat. Now stacking joints here. Wrist, elbow, shoulder, shoulder, all the way up. This might be enough for some of you. Maybe you wanna pick up that top leg. In a more fuller expression of this pose. You both legs out. Try not to fall over like I did. Coming here, maybe even picking up that top foot. And stay with your breath. Slowly lower that to the mat. If you really want to take a vinyasa, or me, just now we're facing the other. I'm just going to face the other one was a little more helpful facing that direction. So it's something to do without the kickstand at all. So if you like that kickstand, feel free to use it. And I'm going to center my right hand in the middle of the mat, turning over. And you don't want to see any hip dip here in this pose. A nice neutral spine. And you feel nice and rooted, lift that top foot up. You can see some of you guys on video, you guys look awesome. <sighs> stay strong, stay with your breath. Slowly lower down to the mat. So if you'd like, just come into a child pose for a second. <sighs> You're a great time to have a sip of water. Remember, at any point in practice, it's a great place to kind of reset. When we're ready, we make our way either through tabletop, we just come right into downward facing dog. Reaching the right leg up, the three legged dog, step into the front of the mat. We're going to come into crescent lunge now for a change. So it's in crescent lunge, the only difference with that and warrior one is that my heel is right over the ball of my foot. So start with warrior one arms. We want to introduce a little back bending here. Kind of interlace your thumbs. Slowly do a back bend. And maybe you want to try cactus arms. They have your preferences in this pose. Just after like chest day, I love to do cactus pose. Kind of open the pectoral muscles up. And a good stretch, squeeze the round voice in your back together behind you. And wherever you are, come back into warrior one arms. Inhale, hands to heart center. Exhale. Twist to the right side. So remember to take some conscious breaths here. It's really hard to breathe in twisted poses. And harder to speak into a yoga class too. 
And if you notice yourself sinking into your leg, push away with your tricep against your quadricep. That's it. Option to reach that left hand to the mat and open your twist. If you want to drop your knee down and that's a little more accessible to you in this pose, feel free to do so. Lowering both hands in front of the front foot. We're going to flatten the back heel. We're coming to Warrior 2 now. Remember warrior two, we have heel to heel alignment here. We're going to reverse our warrior now, flipping the palms to the ceiling. Inhale that right arm up. Notice the, nope. I, I notice a lot of people, they kind of straighten that front knee as they come up. Just be mindful of that. Kind of sending breath into that right lung. Very good. Coming through warrior two. Forearm to quadricep. Open the chest to the left side of the room. If you'd like to add a little more core, lift that bottom hand. Kind of open your chest, almost like you're stacking one shoulder over the other. Driving through the feet back to warrior two. Cartwheel the hands to the mat. And come through your flow. Or meet us in downward facing dog. Opposite side now, drive that left heel up. Step it to the front of the mat. Coming into crescent lunge. You can stay here for a bit. And again, if you want to lower that back knee, feel free to do so. If you want to play with those arm variations, like coming into the back bend, Maybe cactus really works for you. Feel free to do that. Feel nice and rooted. Inhale, hands to heart center. Exhale, twist to the right side. And not sinking into that leg. Pushing away from it with that tricep. We're going to right hand down to the mat, if you so choose to do so, and open our twist. Yeah, as much as we can feel, kind of body awareness here, stacking one arm, one shoulder, right over the other. Hands to the mat, flattening the back foot. And I like you to use each edge of the mat to kind of line up my heels for me. Or however you choose to do so, coming into warrior two. Palms to the ceiling. Deep inhale into that left lung. Exhale. Move through warrior two into extended side angle. Opening the chest of the room, picking up that bottom hand. We want to add that little bit of extra core. <sighs> Driving through the heels, back to warrior two. Cartwheeling the hands to the mat. Again, coming through our flow or meeting downward facing dog. Let's go through that again, something similar. Drive the right heel up, step it to the front of the mat. Ground through the mat, nice and strong here. Back to crescent lunge. We're just gonna be here for a little bit of a breath. I'm gonna open up into warrior two. We're gonna come into triangle. I know Tina's been teaching a lot of half moon lately. So I think uh, for those of us that might have a little bit of a weaker half moon, this is a great way to kind of build that pose. Then have a straight in the front knee. And I'm going to pull to the front of the room like someone's grabbing my wrist. Lower the right fingertips to the mat. Come into triangle pose. It's a great prereq for uh, half upper uh, uh, half moon pose. 
some new breath here, making sure that that front hip is nice and tucked in too. And a great way of seeing that is looking at your front knee. Your, your front knee should be perfectly straight. So if it's a little in, your hip's gonna kind of stick out. If your foot's a little out, the hip's actually gonna come in a little bit. Make sure you keep that foot nice and straight in our, in our triangle pose. And then a little more to this pose. So I love twisting poses so much. Getting those obliques, uh, obliques involved. Reaching the left hand to the mat. Opening to the opposite side. <sighs> Twisted triangle. <sighs> and I always like to say, if you're uh, not feeling this in your core, you're doing it wrong. So stay with your breath. Really twist, really get those obliques burning. Hands to the mat, onto the ball of the left foot. And we're gonna come through our flow. Nice and controlled. And now drive that left foot up. Step it to the front of the mat. Or your, oh, excuse me, got a crescent lunge. Here for just a breath. Flatten uh, the back foot, open to the side of the room. Warrior two, straightening the front knee, pulling, this is a better view for the uh, triangle for sure, pulling the front of the room as much as we can go, lowering the fingertips to the mat, and want that nice alignment. Another great way to make sure you're nice and straight, you can try touching your shoulder, just kind of looking at your elbow and unraveling it. And keeping that front knee nice and uh, straight and in line with the, the back edge of the mat or the side edge of the mat. And keeping that hip tucked in. Here for a couple more breaths just to even out. Reaching right hand to the mat. Open it, twisting to the side. Bring your hands to the mat, coming up on our right toes, coming through our vinyasa, we're meeting down downward facing dog. I'm going to stay there for a second, just have to check out the time. Very good. Lifting that right leg now, three-legged dog, and bring it out in front of us now and come into a pigeon. So I like to start here by kind of coming up on my, tensing my fingertips. I come up like this proud pigeon. I'm a really cocky once we see New York, right? We get really close to you. And as you do that, you can really especially feel all those hip flexors on the left side. They're really stretching out, right? And you can feel the, the glutes on the right side stretching. So I really like this pose. I really like to talk about it because our hips are kind of doing opposite things here. On the left side, our hip flexors are stretching and our hip extenders, like our glute, are shortening, right? You can feel that. And the opposite side of the true, the, the, uh, the glutes here are the ones getting a good stretch. That's enough of me talking. We'll slowly lower to the mat, maybe onto the forearms. We're flat on the mat. Come out of this pose carefully. I like to do it kind of reverse. I kind of first come up on my toes, come up to that proud pigeon, drive through that foot, drive that right heel back. Lower that down to the mat. Now switch to the opposite side now. Left leg, three legged dog. Bring that leg out nice in front of us. Again, if you like that kind of proud pigeon thing first, it helps me kind of sit back and sink back into my hips a little better, I think. Just be a little more aware of how uh, 
both sides of my hips should feel in this pose, right? Not just thinking about the left side. We're ready. Slowly lower to the mat. And carefully working our way out of that pose now. Same cues as before, coming out of the ball of our foot, driving that left leg up, placing it down. Hovering over into a high plank now. You want to slowly lower to the mat. Set your own pace as slow as you can, knees up or down, to lie nice and flat on our mats. We're going to do some uh, good pose for our backs now, some back bending. I'm going to start with locust pose. If you just want to try a little bit different than the traditional locus for your hands behind you, just to kind of get the upper back involved a little more, I'm going to bring my hands out in front, almost in cactus arms, like a, a skydiver is kind of what we call it. So I'm going to start inhaling off the mat, bring it up chest and feet and legs. Notice with our breath, we're going to come up a little higher off. And slowly lower to the mat. And another piece of advice here, if you have any lower back pain or it feels a little too tight in that pose, open your legs up behind you. If you want to get it involved a little more, touch your two big toes together behind you. So go through that pose one more time. Deep inhale coming up off the mat. Locus. Slowly lower down to the mat. Me up onto our knees now. Do one more back bend. I'm gonna come into camel pose. So I'm gonna do it one side at a time. I think I can do full camel, but I don't think I can get out of full camel. I'll have to uh, call my wife downstairs to get me out of the pose. So I'm gonna do it one side at a time. If you can do full camel, feel free to do so. So I'm gonna start by inhaling the left arm up. And the right hand, I'm going to reach back for my heels. A lot of people usually don't think of this is a back bending. We really want to think about your hips too here and driving those hips forward. So a good uh, stretch for our hip flexors. Those are stretching. And our hip extenders are flexing. Slowly coming out, preparing for your second camel, or evening out on the opposite side. Inhaling the right arm up. Reaching left hand, left ankle. Excellent, driving those hips forward. Bending that back. Really carefully make our way out of the pose. Having a seat. We'll do a little bit of core work for the final cool down. I'm going to start into a Navasana or boat pose. So from a seated position, just kind of rock back in your six bones. Pull your chest forward, bringing your arms out in front. The more you pull your chest forward, the less you have that spine curvature. Adding a little more to this pose. Drive those feet out in front of you. And holding here as much as you can. You're coming into low boat. You're kind of pulling yourself up by the rope. Boat pose. Low boat. Pull it up back through boat. 
If your arms above you now, low, low. Crunching up. Pulling up, boom. Awesome job. Slowly lower flat on the mat. Kind of hug your knees to your chest. And you roll back and forth from lower back. You had some lower lumbar relief. Finding stillness. Hands behind the head. Right elbow, right knee. And extend that left leg out. I'm going to do leg lifts here. I'm going to do 10 on each side. So at your own pace. I'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hug that knee in, extend the opposite leg out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hug those knees in. A little core specific work in that. Awesome job, everyone. So, a little lie flat on the mat. Soles of the feet to touch. You know, it's, it's definitely a, it's a small back bend, so I don't want you to think we're uh, doing a lot more back bending. I want you all to try to come back into bridge pose in the same way as before, maybe interlace your fingers. And the reason I, I usually like to repeat a couple poses in the practice, just so we notice the differences in how they land in our body compared to the start of the practice to now. This is a great pose here, especially after a little bit of abdominal work. So we're stretching the uh, abdominals from the muscles in the front. Driving through our hips. Again, just notice how it lands in your body for me. It definitely feels like my lower back is a bit of a workout after that locus and that camel. For you, maybe you feel some core soreness. Just acknowledge it and how it lands in your body. Slowly lowering the hips. Grabbing the outside edge of the feet. We're going to come into happy baby. I'm going to wind things down now. Maybe roll around that lower lumbar spine. And then happy baby, I know it's a tendency for people to curl up too much. So you really want to try to have as neutral spine as you can and reach that tailbone to the mat. Staying here for a few breaths. Slowly legs to the neck. Let's keep an eye on time here. So we're going to do some spinal twists. Now I'll scary that sounds. So I'm going to bring my right knee to my chest here. I'm going to bring my right leg across my body. My gaze will be to the opposite direction. Maybe just using my right hand to encourage a deeper stretch. You really want to think about kind of bringing out your body kind of like a dish towel. Kind of twisting opposite directions. Stay for a few more breaths. Transitioning to the other side. I oh, almost knocked over my glass of water there. <laughs> Bringing left knee to the chest now. Leg across your body, gaze to the opposite side.
slowly lowering back on your upper uh, back your back. We're going to come into a Viparita Karate now. It's a fancy uh, yoga way of saying feet to the ceiling. So I'm going to create a diamond out of my hands. Just for a little bit of uh, relief of my tailbone. I'm going to bring my feet up to the ceiling. And again, now that we're doing this on our backs, I just want to call back to bridge and how I uh, started the practice by saying that it's opposite of a sitting motion. Let's kind of feel how this uh, like lands in your hips, this kind of simple pose here. And notice how like it's kind of like a seated motion, how it's very opposite to, uh, to the bridge pose when our feet are planted and our hips are kind of, hip flexors are extending to the front, right? Coming up. You have an option to stay here. Let me just keep an eye on the time. We come into shoulder stand. This is rolling up on the shoulders, catching the lower back, and pointing the toes. Again, even though I kind of looked at the camera, that's what you're not should do. Try to keep your neck as still as possible in this pose. Keeping the toes nice and pointed. Even using our uh, Uddiyana Banda, belly button to spine, and using our core strength for additional stability. And I didn't have the couch behind me, I'd come into plow. So if you want to go into plow, feel free to do so. And when you're ready to come out of this pose, slowly lower to the mat one vertebrae at a time. And come into a corpse pose or savasana. Like Tina likes to say, it's the most metal pose of all the poses, right? Where my palms to the ceiling. Stay with my breath, reflect on my practice. I usually like to say in my practice that, uh, you know, really uh, be appreciative of the bodies we have and the amazing things we can do with them no matter what level we're at. We can all take something positive away from our classes and our practices. Maybe be appreciative that we have, have awesome, uh, an awesome metal yoga community where we can listen to elder and cough instead of uh, traditional yoga music in our practices. They're both great, they both have our place, but you know, we're all here because we love metal, right? A great community. And just take this extra minute just to relax. When you're ready, you can come up into a comfortable seated position. And I want to thank everyone for uh, coming to this class and uh, happy you guys got to enjoy a class from me. Sorry, I was subbing for Tina. For those of you who are expecting Tina, you can always see me on Mondays. And if you'd like to donate to Black Widow Yoga, uh, it is the PayPal is Tina at BlackWidowYoga.com. And the Venmo is Black, Middle Yo uh, Black Widow Yoga. And the recommended donation is $6.66. But please, uh, if you're out of work or anything, this is uh, an offering all of us at Black Widow Yoga do for the community. So donations are uh, appreciated, but not necessary. So thank you, everyone, for taking the class. Bring our hands to heart center and say namaste. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, take care. Oops.